well, the title was already said, it might seem a bit complicated, so what we'll do uh, first is let's see what actually is this tool or this project trying to achieve. Uh, the goal is to check if some part of the kernel, Linux kernel, behaves the same between two versions of the kernel, of, of, between two different uh, kernel versions. Uh, this part can be either a function or it can be uh, some setting, uh, some runtime parameter. We want to check if it uh, affects the uh, kernel the same, etc. Generally, and I will stick to this, we will compare the uh, change in behavior of a function between two different kernel versions. Uh, as for, for example, parameters, these are represented as global variables. For these, we will check uh, whether, well, we will check all functions that use this variable and we will again check for equality. So, generally, we will check whether uh, two functions behave the same between two different kernel variants. This is very difficult to test since you would need a test for each such function, for each function that uh, you want to compare. You would need a test, and moreover, the test would have to cover all possible paths that through the function. This is impossible to write, so what we will do, we will check the source code. Uh, so this was the what is going on. The next step is why do we need this? Why, do, why bother comparing such things? Well, software evolves. It evolves fast and evolves quite a lot. And especially in such a project as kernel is, which is community developed, there is a lot of changes and you really cannot control or you really don't know what's going on after each change. Uh, but in the, in the same time, if you want to use such project in uh, your product, it is often very nice to have some stability and compatibility. For instance, it is, if you have some setting in kernel, some, for example, uh, if you set some runtime parameters to some value, you expect it to behave somehow. And after that, if you have a new version of the kernel, you expect that if you set the same value to the same parameter, it will behave the same. But is this really the case? Can you be sure that it, it really does uh, behave the same? Second thing, or second use case is uh, in Red Hat, we guarantee stability of so-called kernel application binary interface, which is basically a list of functions which are guaranteed to have the same semantics in different releases of uh, our kernel. Also here, we want to check whether this really holds. So, as I said, we will use some checking of the source code, and the first obvious thing is, let's use diff. Can we do it? Let's see an example. Here, I have a two functions, it's called, functions called bio app page, from two, uh, from RHEL 7.5 and RHEL 7.6, so from kernels in these, in the RHELs. The question is, are these functions the same? Well, from the first side, yes they are. If you pass them to diff, the diff would be empty, so yes they are. But, the, the function calls another function, for example, well, actually two of them, but let's stick to this one, max size offset, which actually, it can be different, right? And truly, it is. If we check definition or implementation of a function, we can see that the return value changed. <coughs> if the return value changed, then the value of this max sectors variable could have changed, and it could have changed also the result of the original function. But we would not see it by using diff only to the top level function. So actually, at least our problem requires checking of the call functions. This could still be doable with diff. So let's see another example. Are these two functions the same? We have a function uh, tcp prop init from two different kernel versions. And well, according to diff and according to the image, obviously they are not. We have uh, the second function has uh, some kind of macro, which checks if some condition holds. And uh, if it doesn't, it probably creates some bug. Uh, Div would say, no, these two functions are not equal. But what if we wanted to check effect of the booth size variable, it's a global variable, which can be set by the user by setting a runtime parameter. So we, use, we want to check whether uh, the effect of this particular variable on the code 
is the same between these two versions. If we see it, well, if, if, we, if, we, if, if you look into it, uh, the value of both sides cannot affect this, these two lines and here these four lines. So basically, what we need to check here, if we want to check with respect to the value of the booth, of booth size, is that we only check these blue parts. And they are actually, even syntactically, equal. So here, we see that the problem requires at least some understanding of the code. We, we need to, our, our tool has to somehow understand what's going on to, to be able to separate these cases, because otherwise it would yield just too many false positives. By false positive, I mean a situation when we say, uh, yes, there is a difference, and in fact, there is no difference, or not at least from the point of view of what, are we, what we are interested in. And we can go even further. This is not from kernel. These are two different implementations of uh, C standard function, so therapy BRK. And the question is, are these two functions equal? If we give the same two pointers to both, the both of the functions, will the effect always be the same? Yes, it will. And this can be proven. So for every possible argument, the effect of the functions is always the same. This, this requires quite a deep understanding of the code. So the question stays the same. How do we do it? Using diff, not sufficient. We have already seen it. We have to use what's something what's called a static analysis. Analysis of the source code. We can analyze C code directly, yes we can, but C code is quite complex, quite structured. Uh, we would need to write our own parser, etc. It's just too complicated. We can analyze assembly, so the code that is generated by a compiler. This obviously is not a good idea as well. It would be machine well, uh, architecture dependent. Again, we would need to parse it somehow, etc. So what do we do? We use a compiler. We use its internal representation and we run the analysis over it. If you were on a talk by Ulrich Rapper yesterday about compiler optimizations, you saw that compilers actually do this. They translate the, the, from the code into some internal representation and then run transformation analysis over this code. Uh, advantages are clear, it's simple than C, but still it contains much more information than assembly and we can use this information to well, uh, to compare better. Uh, in the project, we will use the Clank or LLVM infrastructure, uh, compiled infrastructure. Uh, and why we will do this? There are multiple reasons. The first one, it has quite well-structured and uh, human-readable internal representation. It can be represented by such nice, nice so-called control flow graphs. Uh, so it's easy to debug. Well, easy. It's easier to debug, uh, and so on. Uh, but what is more important, uh, it has very good infrastructure. It already contains a lot of built-in analysis and code transformations, which we can actually use. It has a nice API and can be used as a library, which is also an advantage. And last but not least, there's already a lot of static analyzers built upon LLVM, and they of usually do their analysis uh, on the level of the uh, intermediate representation, and so we can use these analyzers to, well, get some useful information from the code. And we will actually do it. So let's see how the overall system or how the overall um, tool works. At the beginning, we have uh, either a parameter or a function. Generally, as I said, we have a function. First, we need to find a source code or source file where it is defined. Then we compile it and we get the LLVM internal representation. Next, we do a thing that's called slicing and some simplifying, which actually essentially takes the representation that uh, went out of the compiler and produces a much simpler but semantically equivalent uh, version of this representation so that uh, it's much easier to analyze. And now the diff comes into play. First, we do uh, a syntax diff, so we compare the, what is left of the function syntactically. If they are syntactically the same, then one, we can say that these two functions are equal. If they are syntactically not the same, we're not done. We need to perform a semantic diff, and based on the result of the semantic diff, we will 
see or tell if functions are equal or not. In case they are not equal, we will also yield or uh, produce an output of uh, if so that the user can see whether, well, can see the actual change. All right, let's go to, uh, let's see individual parts of this. For source finding, uh, we use uh, Syscope, which is a tool for finding uh, definitions and declarations and usages of uh, functions, variables, etc. in projects written in C. It works pretty well, has some bugs, but we were able to overcome them. Uh, as for the compilation, this is more difficult because Clang is uh, officially not supported for kernel building. Basically what we do is that we use Kbuild, it's an internal build uh, system of kernel. We check which command would be used by Kbuild to build some module, uh, function, um, file, and so on. We take this command, remove all optimization because for analysis it's better to have no optimizations. Uh, and then run it with Clang instead of GCC. This gets, uh, gets us the internal representation. As I said, uh, Clang is not supported for kernel building, so we need a bunch of hacks that uh, we implemented to overcome the limitations. A good example is that uh, Clang doesn't support assembly go to, uh, which is now required by kernel, or kernel requires that the compiler compiling it has to support this. Uh, feature, so that's why uh, Clang is not supported, and the re well, the outcome of this is that the produce code is not compilable into actual an actual executable or an actual object file. It's use usable for analysis only, which is sufficient for us, obviously. The next part is uh, <coughs> simplification of the code. Uh, first part is so-called slicing. It's a technique of removing information from the code that, it, that is not relevant for the current context or for the current analysis. This is the exa example with the booth size uh, variable that we have seen in the beginning. And you can see that uh, if we want to analyze this function with respect to the value of booth size, then we can remove these first two lines because these two lines can never, never be affected by a value of the booth size or of the global variable booth size. Uh, next, we run some a lot of code simplifications, either those that are built into the Clang or we have some custom, such as, for example, removing content of printed functions because we are not interested in, well, uh, if, the, if some module prints, uh, has some different wording of uh, warning message, uh, it's not a semantic change. Uh, then that code elimination, which is built into the compiler and a lot of stuff which simplifies the code so that it's uh, as simple as possible to, to analyze it, but still keeping the original semantics. And now the diff comes into play. Uh, the first part is syntactic diff, which we based on uh, LLVM's component called function comparator. Basically what it does, it takes codes and goes instruction by instruction and compares them if they are equal. Uh, this is basically a syntactic diff, but with uh, some features, so or it can discover or it can handle some syntactic changes that do not affect semantics. For example, variable renaming. Since we are using the internal representation, variable names do not have any meaning or we don't care about the name. So if you rename a variable, this will already hand it, uh, handle it. Uh, another example is it can handle changes in structure layout, uh, bit casts, uh, etc. In case that uh, syntax diff says that the functions are syntactically equal, we are done, as I said. In case it doesn't, it uh, returns a list of functions that are different and that need further analysis. And that's where semantic diff comes. And that's one of the reasons why this talk is in the academic section, because that's where science comes. Uh, <laughs> our semantic diff is based on an academic tool, LRF. It's developed in, um, in an university in Germany. And the tool takes the programs and translates them into logical formula. The logical formula uh, expresses the effect of the program. Then we use a tool for solving logical formula, a so-called SMT solver. Maybe some of you heard about it, some of you maybe used it. And we ask the solver the following question. Is there an input, is there some input, such that 
the first program <coughs> run with this input yields a different result than running the second program with the same input. In case the solver says, yes, it is, that there is such input, then we have proven that the programs are not equal because we have found a, an input such that uh, both functions have different effect. If the solver says no, there is no such input, then we actually proved that the programs are for sure equal. All right, I think we have some time, so I would like to show you a demo of how or what the uh, output looks like. Can you see it? Uh, maybe I can, okay, make it larger. So we'll uh, run difference in two functions in uh, KBI. Uh, we get versions. Uh, these are the uh, rel 7, 5, and 7, 6 versions. Uh, we specify the function and we say that we want the syntactic diff. Let's see, hopefully it works. It takes some time to compute. And we can see the result here. Uh, ah, I have my mouse. So uh, it says that it is actually, this is the function from the first, very first example that I showed. Uh, we can see that this is, this is the name of the whitelist symbol. Uh, this is the name of some called function, and we can see the call stack, so how, the, how we can get from uh, the, the original function to this called function, which is uh, semantically different, and we can see the diff, which is actually, you can see, if you, if you recall, my first example, there is change in the return value, uh, and at the end, some nice statistics. Okay, uh, let's see another uh, kind of, or more verbose output. Uh, we will check difference in uh, in, a set, in, a, in a parameter, in a, sys, in a runtime parameter that you can set by sys, CTL. Uh, we'll use a different well, front end, uh, again versions, and now we will give it name of the uh, parameter, which user actually can set up. This is a, this is a runtime parameter that the user can set. Uh, so, let's go. And now, since it's a parameter, which is actually represented by a global or, uh, there will be more things checked. Uh, I will maybe make it a bit slower. Yeah, not slower, smaller. Uh, here we can see a more verbose output, and we can see that it compared quite a lot of things. First, it compared a so-called prods handle function, which is a function that is called when the parameter is set by the user. Uh, it found Prod's uh, handler function of the first one, the second one, it's called, uh, it's called this, and we can see that it has an equal syntax. After that, uh, <laughs> after the user sets this parameter, uh, it reflects in setting a value of some global variable that can affect various parts of the kernel, and actually we can see that it, can, it is used in one, two, three, six, uh, six uh, functions overall, and the uh, tool check that all of them are syntactically equal with respect to that particular global variable. Again, some statistics on the end, at the end. All right, uh, it's near the end. So that's basically it from my talk. Uh, I would be very happy if you want to try uh, RiffCamp. We have a prepared uh, Docker image or container image, as I found yesterday, we have to call it. Uh, so we have a prepared container image on Docker Hub. You can download it, everything is prepared there. Uh, it's an open source tool, so you can, uh, we have it on GitHub. You can also find a readme there, where uh, there are instructions on how to run it, etc. And if you have any feedback, if you find some bug, you can file an issue. If you fix the bug, that's even better. You can send a PR, everything is welcome. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. So is this tool usable only for kernel, or can I use any software? Uh, currently is it is uh, usable only for kernel. It's designed to, uh, for kernel, but generally the method or the, the, the approach can be used for anything. And I was trying, that's one of the reasons why I used LLVM, because there are quite, there's quite a lot of languages that can be translated into LLVM internal representation. So basically you just, uh, well, you just change the, the part of compiling, etc., and then the comparison stays the same. But currently we are developing this for kernel. Yes? Uh, 
Uh, sorry, no, we uh, actually know there was no semantic analyzer run. Uh, the semantic analyzer itself, it's quite a difficult procedure, which is quite expensive. And actually, uh, in kernel, there are only, well, there are no such things that I, I showed you on, uh, for the um, libc implementations. Uh, there are only very few uh, examples where it actually helps because usually when there is a change, the change is, like, is real. At least in the kernels I was, I was uh, working on. Can uh, Yeah, we analyzed the whole, uh, well, we diffed uh, kernels between rail 7.5 and 7.6 and uh, out of, I think there is like 750 uh, whitelist functions and 100 of them are syntactically different. Or 100 of them have call some function that is syntactically different. Let, let, me, let me rephrase that. If you, if you could go back to your, your first example where you... Yeah. Uh, this one. This one. Or this one. They, they're certainly syntactically different, but the latter one is more than one. Right? Yes. That is true. That is true. So let me, let me ask yeah. you Sorry, I can't hear you. I, I'll I cannot tell okay. because I'm not a kernel developer. No, no, so, uh, I mean, I yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't an unfair question. This is actually, uh, what, this is the reason why we're doing this, is that, of course, these things must be checked by developers of that particular kernel module. But he doesn't want to go through thousands of lines of code that is equal. So with this, we can give him the particle or concrete changes, syntactic changes, and he can check and say, okay, this is, this is fine. This is actually an optimization, let's keep it. Yeah, but it's not up to me or up to the tool to say this. Uh, you were first, yeah? yeah. You say that um, at the end of the two optimization, uh, you know that GCC, like if you compile with uh, minus L2 or minus L3, actually the semantics can change. Like, yeah. I mean, Yes. So that's a bit dangerous. Uh, oh. That's why I'm using. Uh, we are using it without any optimizations. Yeah, but then you could have a uh, difference that doesn't. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we could have a difference that no, is. Yeah, that. Then. Yeah, we could have a. Di or to repeat the question, the question is. Uh, or the statement is that we actually can have a difference which uh, is not seen in the syntax, but it uh, appears. Once you compile the same code with uh, minus O2 or minus O3 in GCC, and there is a semantic change, we cannot detect this because this is this is a compiler change. It's not a uh, it's not a source code change. So unfortunately, we are not able to detect this. I think we are out of time. So thank you for your attention. For your questions.